Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this invisible person effect in Photoshop. Usually when you want to create this kind of composite, you're going to take a photo of your subject, have your subject move out of frame, and then take another clean plate. However, with Photoshop AI, we can now create that clean plate if we just have a single photo. And what I'm going to do in this tutorial is show you how to create these types of invisible person images with a single image and the tools in Photoshop. So go ahead, download the image that I use in a link in the description of this video, and then let's dive into Photoshop. All right, we're going to be starting with this file that I downloaded from Unsplash. And for these types of composites, you want um, photos where there's elements of skin, but mostly the person is covered with some kind of clothing. This one's great because he's wearing a hat. We've got some glasses. His hands are not overlapping the front of his body. And we've got these leg parts. So it'll create a very nice uh, invisible person effect. So first, let's go ahead and just make a copy of our background so we always have the original to refer back to. To do that, I'm just gonna do Command J on the keyboard. Um, the next thing I wanna do is just select him out of the background. To do that, I could go down here, select subject. However, I wanna make sure that I'm using cloud for more detailed results. So if I go to one of my auto selection tools here, I'm gonna get this select subject. I'm gonna go down to cloud detailed results and then click on select subject. And now the AI in Photoshop is making my selection for me. You can see that looks really good. We do have a little part here of his hat that doesn't belong. But beyond that, it looks like a really good selection. So let's go into the Select and Mask workspace. Um, because our background is orange, this overlay color is not really helping me. So I'm gonna change that to green. And if you're not seeing this overlay, just go here and change your view mode to overlay. I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm doing that by holding a command and the space bar and then scrubbing left and right. I'm gonna use my brush tool here, hold down option so it's minusing and just paint this away like so. Okay, and then let's just go ahead and look at our edges. Got a little bit of extra right here, but I'm gonna leave that in just in case it's part of his hand. And then here, if we take the opacity of our overlay down a bit, you can see we have some fingers lost. Um, we are gonna be deleting his skin, so this isn't super important, um, but we can also just clean it up by painting with white the areas that our smart selection missed. So something like that. And I think that looks good enough. So I'm gonna hit okay down here. And then I'm gonna make another copy of this layer. We're gonna call this model. And I'm gonna add a mask. And when you have a selection and click on the mask icon, it'll incorporate that selection into your mask. And you can see that here. And now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and turn off my model layer. And I wanna load the selection. And to do that, I'm gonna hold down Command and just click on the mask thumbnail. And there you can see it's now loaded that selection. I'm gonna go down here to this uh, feathered pen icon and go to expand selection. And that'll allow me to make my selection bigger by a certain amount of pixels. Here, I wanna extend it out so that when I erase him from the background, um, I don't have a little outline of him left over. So let's just make this 20, hit OK, and there you can see it's expanded it out. I'm gonna hit Generative Fill, and I don't want anything, I just want it to replace it with the background, so I'm just gonna hit Generate. No prompt. Um, I have tried prompts like Remove or Delete, and they don't really seem to 
to help at all. So just going to leave it blank, see what kind of results we get. That looks pretty good. I like that better. I like, so I kind of like these. I don't like what it's doing to the shadow and I don't particularly like these handles. So I'm going to try it one more time, hit another generate. This will get us three more options. And this is really the power of this generative fill tool is that we can create this background that we never photographed and which uh, outside of this virtual reality does not exist. So I think this is pretty good. I still am not happy with this thing, but I think I'll be more successful just generating this area right here and not trying to generate the whole thing again. And that looks great. Okay, now I want to collapse all these. So I'm going to take both my generative fill layers and my background layer. Make sure you don't select your model layer. So you may want to just bring that above and then you can hold down shift and select these three layers. And we're going to go to merge layers. So command E on your keyboard. And that's just going to merge all those. And then we're going to call this clean background. Okay, one thing before I start deleting and making our man invisible, there's one other thing I want to do, and that's just make one more copy of the background. And this one we're going to put above the clean, and we're going to call this reference. I'm going to turn it off for now. You're going to see why we need that in a few minutes. All right, so back to our model layer. I want to start deleting the model away from the background. So in order to do that, I need to start drawing out away from my mask, but I kind of want to keep this mask intact. So I basically need a second mask. Now there's two ways for me to do this. One is I could put this in a folder and then add the mask to a folder. And effectively, I now have two masks. But another way I can do this, and I'm just going to Command Z back to just having the model, I can right mouse click and convert to a smart object. That'll basically embed the mask into the smart object. And now I can just add another mask to the smart object layer. And that's what I'm going to do here. And then what I'm going to do is go zoom in to the various areas and just select out the parts of him that I want to erase. And the way I'm going to make my selections is I'm going to use the pen tool, make sure it's on path, and then I'll convert my pen shapes into selections. So for the first one, we'll kind of do around the hat here, something like this. And then I'm going to go also and go around his collar here. So we're getting rid of everything every part where his skin is showing. So just like that, and we'll right mouse click and make selection. Hit OK. And then make sure my mask is selected and I want to fill with my foreground color. So to do that, I'm going to hold Option and Delete. Or Alt Backspace on a PC. All right, next I'm going to cut out this hand. I'm going to do the same thing, meaning I'm going to make my shape with the pen tool, and then I'll turn this into a selection. Make selection, and then fill with black. We'll go and do the legs. Again, I'm doing the same thing, using the pen tool to make my shape. And the part that I'm selecting is anywhere where there's skin showing. And we'll right mouse click, make selection, fill with black, command D to deselect. Zoom back into our new spot and repeat the process. 
And the reason I like using the pen tool is it allows me to do these very organic curves, which are really hard to do if you're using the lasso tool without leaving jagged artifacts. So for any kind of application like this, my go-to method for making the selections is going to be using the pen tool and then converting that to a selection. Okay, last thing is the hand. Okay, so that cuts out all the skin parts. The one other thing I need to address here is I want to put his glasses on their own layer so that I can retain those in my composite. So to do that, I'm going to zoom in here and I need to be able to see a little better in the shadow areas. So I'm just going to make a reference curves layer, just bring up the bottom and the middle a bit just so I can see a little bit better. I'm going to throw this layer away once I'm done with my selection. And here I basically want to select around where the glasses are and they're a little bit lost in the shadow here. So you kind of have to invent where that line would be. And then we're going to draw all around the glasses here. And this will really help with our invisible man effect, having the floating glasses. Okay, so that looks good. Let's do make selection. And here I can throw away this curves layer. I don't need that anymore. And on my original model layer, I'm going to do command J. We're going to call this glasses. And for now, I'm just going to turn that off. The next thing we're going to do is basically just build in the parts that are now missing basically the back side of those clothes. And to do that, we're just going to use some simple painting in Photoshop. So let's zoom in. We're going to do the hat first. And for the hat, I also need to represent this blacker middle part of the hat where your head's going to go into. So I think the most uh, realistic way of doing that is going to be creating an elliptical. So here, rather than using the pen tool to create my shape, I'm going to start with this elliptical. I want to make sure it's still on shape up here. And then I'm just going to create a shape. Oh, sorry. You want to make sure it's on path, not shape. And then here, I'm going to start making my shape. Now you can see that it's added this transform box to it. So I'm going to go onto my normal move tool and do command T. That'll bring back my transform. Now what I can do is hold down command or control and just kind of start moving these points around to better match up where this line would be in the original hat. So something like this. And I think something like that. So let's hit the check mark. And then I'm going to go back onto my pen tool, my direct selection tool, select that path, right mouse click and make selection. All right. And then here, let's go ahead and add a new layer and we can call this hat. And here I just want to paint with the blackest element. So let's go onto our brush tool, which is B on your keyboard. And I'm going to right mouse click and let's just go to our general brushes. And if we scroll down, we're going to do this soft round pressure opacity and flow. And then I'm going to hold down option that allows me to select what color I'm going to use. I'm just going to pick the blackest 
black that I can find in the image, which is probably right around here. And paint that. Now I need to invert my selection. So I can click on this little icon here. And I want to make sure I'm not selecting outside of the existing hat. So to do that, I basically need to intersect this selection with these two. So to do that, I'm going to hold down Command. There you can see that would basically change my selection. And then if I also hold down Shift and Option or Shift and Alt, you can see my little icon turned into an X. That's going to intersect. And then I can also intersect with this mask. Now you can see I just have the part of the mask that I want to paint. And here I'm going to select this lighter color and then paint this bottom area. Something like that. All right, and then I can do Command D to drop my selection. I am seeing that there is just a little bit of a line there. So I'm going to make my brush smaller. Select this kind of darker color here and just maybe paint over this line right here. And actually what I can do, because I have a path, I can select this path and with this brush selected, just click on this stroke thing. And what it'll do is it'll take that path and just draw a circle around it. And you can see that looks pretty good. I might want to make just the top of this a little darker. So to do that, I can select my path. And to do that, I'm just holding down command and clicking on the path. And then I can take my brush, make it a bit bigger. And I'm doing that just by holding control and option, dragging left and right, or up and down for the softness. And here, I want to select this dark color, go into my dark, and go to the brightness, which is the B right here, and just pull this two points down. So it was nine, I made it seven, I'm going to hit OK. And this will add just a little bit of darkness to the top of that, just make this look more like a hat. Okay, so that finishes our hat. Let's do the inside of the shirt next. So we'll add this and we'll call this shirt. And for this, I'm going to first make my selection. I'm actually going to pull this so it's behind the existing shirt or the existing model layer. Go to my pen tool and just start drawing where this color should be. like so. We'll right mouse click, make selection, go B for the brush tool. I'm going to select this kind of darker color here and just paint in. And then maybe along the top, there'd be a little more light hitting it. So maybe select this color, take my flow down to like 10 and just make it a little bit lighter on this side because the light's coming in here. And then maybe select an even darker part of the shirt. So maybe the shadow right here with a very soft brush. I'm just going to come in right at the bottom here. That's going to create like as it's going further into the shirt, it's getting a little darker there. All right, we'll deselect. That looks pretty good. We can also just come in here and with some tiny brushes, just add in a tiny bit of detail. So I'm going to lock the transparency. And what that means is if I'm brushing, it won't allow me to brush anything beyond my existing transparency. So if I paint outside of my object, it's not letting me paint past it. So that's what locking the transparency does. I'm going to do Command Z, get rid of those lines there, and then select this and just kind of extend this a little bit so that it looks like this is whipping around a bit like that. And then maybe take this darker color, extend that to the edge here, something like this. And then if we wanted to get a little a little fancier, we could also maybe just go to our pen tool kind of where the bottom of the collar would be. So somewhere around here, maybe. And just select this, make selection, 
And we're still just selecting this layer. So I can do Command M for image adjustments curves, just Command M. Just make this a tiny bit darker. And that's just going to add uh, maybe even a little more than that. So bring it back up, but not a lot, just a tiny bit darker, just so that we get that slight line there. It looks a little more realistic. Okay, so that finishes the shirt. Let's tackle the sleeve and we can call this right sleeve. And here again, I'm gonna draw where this would be. So something like this. And again, I'm gonna put this behind the subject so it doesn't really matter that I encroach on the inside of it like this. Okay, and then we'll go to our brush tool, select the shadow part of the shirt here and just paint with that color. And then I'm gonna take an even more shady part of the shirt here, make my brush darker just at the top there, and then maybe even darker as it's going inside the sleeve there. So something like that. Okay, now for the right sleeve here, I'm going to paint this on top. And basically what I want to do is I want to paint out the skin tone here. So let's just go to our pen tool, make our selection of that skin tone area. We'll make a selection. And then I'm going to make a new layer and we'll call this left sleeve. And on my brush tool, We'll just select the dark part of the shirt here, fill that in, and then we'll kind of blend it in with the existing shade there. So something like that it looks like we're just kind of peeking to the inside of the shirt. And then I also need the other side of the band of the watch here. So let's go ahead and make one more. This is going to be about the size of the watch band. And this is all just eyeballing it, so. And for this, I think I wanna have some of this texture. So what I'll do is I'll go to my stamp tool, make sure it's on all layers. I'm gonna select this by holding option and just start painting here. I'll put some of that texture on the inside. Oops. And then for the rest, I'll just go onto my brush tool and paint in this darker color. And I kind of want to cover this. I don't want it to be as bright. So I'm going to select my dark color, change my flow to, let's say 20, and just paint over this a couple times. So there it has a little bit of a highlight there, but not much. Just enough that you notice it when you zoom out. And I think that looks good. Okay, and then we need to do the pant leg. So let's do the right pant leg first. And here, add a layer, I'll call right pant leg. I'm gonna go back to my pen tool. And here, we'll start on this edge. And this is where I wanna turn on my reference layer. And I'm gonna take the opacity on the reference layer down so I can see both the background and the reference at the same time. And this reference is basically just helping me, like if that leg was there, what would the other side of this fabric look like, right? It wouldn't look like this, for example, that would make no sense because the leg's there. So instead we'll do something more like, if we can imagine the shape of the leg being inside here. So something like this. And we'll make selection. I'm going to turn off my reference layer, go back to the right pant leg, go B for my brush, bring up my flow to 100, and then select this color and just fill in the pant leg. And then I want to select the darkest black of the pant leg. 
and never just default to black here. When you're working with a photo, the blacks are never black and you don't want to use a black that doesn't match the black point of your image. So for example, if I hit D to default my colors to black and white, you can see how black that black is. It's blacker than my blackest black. So we don't want to do that. Instead, we want to just take our blackest black from the image itself and then use that as our black point. So something like this. All right, and then we're going to do the left pant leg. And we'll do the same thing. Turn on our reference. Go P for our pen tool. And draw where this would be if there was a leg in there, an invisible leg in the pant leg. So something like this. I'm going to take this lighter color here, change my flow to about 20. Now to interactively change your flow on your brush, uh, you probably already know that like if you hit three on the keyboard or four on the keyboard, it changes your opacity. But if you hold down shift and hit numbers, it changes your flow. So if I wanted to change my flow to 20, I could hold down shift and hit two on the keyboard. I'm going to make just a little bit of light hitting the inside of the pant leg there, like that. Okay, pant legs done. The last thing we need to do is the two socks. So let's do the right sock first. And for the sock layer, I want to put it beneath the model or underneath the model in my layer stack. I'm going to go to the pen tool, start from this edge. And I'll turn on my reference again because I want to see where the leg is. That looks good. Make a selection, turn off our reference. I'm going to go B for my brush tool. And I want to take the flow back up to 100. So I'm just going to do Shift 0. Then I'll select kind of a shadow color here in my sock. And here I want it to have more shade. So I'm going to pick a darker spot and just have more shade at the bottom. And here I also want to have just a bit of this texture also on the sock. So to do that, I need to select out the sock. So I'm going to hold down command, click on this, then Again, I want to intersect, so I'm going to hold down Command, Shift, and Option, and click on my mask. And then I can go on to my Lasso tool. Again, I want to intersect, so I'm going to hold down Shift and Command, or sorry, Shift and Option, or Shift and Alt. And then I can just select the part of the sock I want, like this. And now I have just that part of the sock selected. I can go to my model layer and do Command J. And in order to manipulate this, um, it's going to be much easier if it's straight up and down. So I'm going to do a transform, turn it straight up and down, commit that transform, and then do transform again. Now what I can do is go to my warp and just start bringing this edge down. Basically something like this. And then we'll do Command T again. And I'm going to start lining this up to this other sock. So we'll put it something like this. And then if I take this, which is the sock texture, and put it right over my right sock layer, and hold down the option, it's going to clip it so that this is only applying to that. And then I can put it on multiply. And now that texture is just transferring to the inside of the sock. I'm going to take the opacity down quite a bit, just to about 50%. And there you can just see a little bit of texture as we're seeing the inside of that sock. Okay, next we're going to do the same thing to this one. 
So let's add another layer and we're going to call this left sock. Go back onto my pen tool, turn on my reference layer again, and start drawing out where this back of the calf would be. Something like this. Make selection. And then I can turn off my reference, go back onto my brush tool, select the shadow color of the sock, and then select an even darker part of the sock. Kind of fill in the bottom there. And then I want to also grab some of this texture. So I'm going to take this sock, te sock texture, hold down option and drag it so that I have a second copy of that. I'm going to place that and just do a little bit of rotation and then clip it to my left sock layer. So something like that. That's pretty good. Okay, the last couple things I want to do is I want to add some film grain on top of the whole image. Um, and also I want to extend it so that it's four by five. Let's extend it first. To do that, I'm going to use a new feature in Photoshop, which is changing my crop fill from background to generative expand. Now, as I make this four by five, what it's going to do is it's going to use AI to fill in the left and right side. So let's hit the check mark. And did not like that. Uh, this is one thing I've found with Generative Expand or any of the generative fill tools. It does unnecessarily error on a lot of images. One trick you can do to get around that is just add a period to your prompt. In a few cases, that does help get rid of that error message. Um, so I don't know how long that workaround will work, but let's see if it works for this. And that worked. Okay, so let's find one that we like. I think this middle one is probably the best. Uh, I do find this a little distracting. So I think what I'm going to do here is just do one more generative fill and we'll just get rid of that. Okay, that looks really good. Final last step I wanna do is because we've painted in some of these elements, you can see that they just don't have the texture that the rest of the image does. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some film grain on top of the whole thing. That way it all has a nice consistent texture. Now there's a lot of ways to add film grain in Photoshop. Um, Probably every video you see me do this, I use a different method. In this one, I'm going to use uh, the camera raw method. So here, first, we're just going to make a 50% gray layer. And I'm going to call this film grain. And I'm going to convert this to a smart object. And then go up to filter, camera raw filter. And then in the camera raw filter, we're going to go down to one of these. Detail, maybe? No, effects. Okay, so effects, you'll see at the bottom we have grain. This allows you to add grain to your image. And the nice thing about the grain in Camera Raw is that you have far more control than you do in uh, if you're just trying to add grain using a noise layer. So here I can adjust the amount of grain, the size of the grain, and my favorite feature is the roughness of the grain. So generally the roughness is just too high. So I'm going to take that down and you get this effect that just looks far more like real film grain. And I think I like that. And now we have the film grain and all we have to do is change the blending mode to linear light. And now that will be applied to our image. Now you can see this is a little too strong. And here we want to just take the fill down until it's about the amount of grain that we want. And when you're using linear light, you really can take your fill down 
quite a bit and still get the grain applied to your image. So even just like 15 is enough to give your image a lot of grain. So there you go. I'm happy with that. And just a quick comparison, that's before, that's after. Oh, now that I've done the before and after, I realize we forgot the glasses. So let's go ahead and tackle our glasses. I'm gonna turn off the film grain, take my glasses layer, bring it to the top here. And with the glasses, all we really have to do is get rid of the middle part because the rest is already cut out. So I'm gonna add a mask to my glasses, go in the pen tool and just draw out the center of the glasses here. All right, then I'll select both of those, make selection, fill with black on my mask. And now we have our glasses as well. We'll turn back on our film grain. And that finishes our composite. So there you have it. That's how you create that invisible person composite in Photoshop. And hopefully through the course of this, you've learned some tips, tricks, and techniques that you can use in your own projects. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, I'd really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, leave a like, share this video, leave a comment. I do read them all. And finally, if you're interested in really learning new Photoshop AI tools and how you would use them in the context of an actual project, I've just released a brand new course called The Human Tourist. And this is a follow along project course but in the course of it, we explore all of Photoshop's AI tools, including Adobe Firefly, Generative Fill, Generative Expand, plus all the standard smart selection tools in Photoshop. Here's a trailer for that course. Okay, here we go.